Hello everybody, how you doing? I got a uh, another Bible study, number three. And today, I want to talk about fiery darts. Alright, so, let me say a prayer real quick. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for who you are, and I thank you for what you're doing in my life and those who are watching. Father God, I just pray right now that this message is received by those watching and that I speak the message with truth and with you speaking through me. I invite the Holy Spirit to just fill my house up with his presence and the house of those who are watching. And I, and I ask that you send down ministry angels to my house and their house, Lord God, and, and we are all together in one accord, Lord God, in Jesus' name. I speak life into their ears, into their minds, into their hearts, into their eyes, so they understand this in Jesus' name. Let the fire of God hit you right now as I minister the Word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is King. The Lord is the King. So, I've already showed you before that I got tons of Bibles, but uh, we're going to be going through a lot. And if those who don't have a Bible, you got a phone. And uh, through the phone, you can get any Bible you want. Um, I, I have a lot of Bibles. Um, I've never went to the store and bought one new. Uh, I, I actually go to a secondhand store, and I look for them all the time. Um, I've bought in a few and just handed them to people um, at the secondhand store. I pick them up for a dollar, you know. Um, uh, some of them have no writing that are like brand new. Some of them have a little bit of writing, but I just look at it and decide if I could learn from it, then I'm going to get it. But a uh, dollar, maybe two dollars. So anyways, that's how you can get a Bible. If you're in my area, come to my house, I'll give you one. Uh, Jesus loves you and I love you. And so I'm going to talk about the fiery darts. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that's got fiery darts coming at them. And you might not understand what that is. But you have to imagine, well, we all have to believe in what we don't see. Right? Faith. Faith in what you don't see. And the fiery darts are there. If the Lord was going to lift the veil up and show you just what's going on around us, the, the, the war between uh, uh, good and evil uh, it, would, it would terrify you you wouldn't be able to function anymore if you really saw that right now um, and there's a verse that we're going to get started on right now and it's 1st Peter 5.8 Okay, so you turn to your Bibles, First Peter five eight, or Google it. Um, I like to read a few versions, so I'm going to this website of BibleHub.com, and um, I just Google it, and then when you see Bible Hub, like I, you, I Google First Peter five eight, and then you'll see Bible Hub version Gateway. I read them all the time, but if you see Bible Hub, it's going to give you all kinds of all kinds of different. Uh, parallel verses and that's how you can see in different different uh, Bibles so 1st Peter 5 8 and you can just look at 5 8 because the next one I have is 5 9 I didn't know they were together <laughs> but I'll just go 1st Peter 5 8 now it says be alert and of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And that's NIV version, New International Version. So right there it says, Be alert and, be, and of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Let's, um, let's read it again in uh, another version. Okay, it says uh, in the New Living Translation, it says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around 
like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, so, basically that's telling you that even though you might not see it, the devil is looking around like a lion ready to feast prey on the prey and, and devour it. The devil's all around trying to attack and kill you. Basically, that's what it's saying. In the New English, in the English Standard Version, the ESV, it says, "Be sober-minded, be watchful, for your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour." Mm -hmm. The King James, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour." So the devil's around, trying to look for someone to attack, someone to kill and destroy. That someone could be you. Right? Or me. Now we'll go to 1 Peter 5, 9. This is one down. It says, in the NIV, it says, Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same suffering. Okay? That's the NIV version. The NLT Stand firm against him. Stand firm against him. And be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters are all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering. <coughs> so, the first verse, the devil's around, looking for victims, looking for people to eat up and devour and kill and destroy. And then this one right here, it's saying stand firm against him. And be strong in your faith. And remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering. You see, just because you're a Christian, it doesn't mean it's not going to stop. It just means that you got to learn how to put on the armor of God. Okay? If you're dealing with sadness, depression, sickness, whatever it is, those are from fiery darts. We haven't got to that, that part yet, but we will. Now I'm going to read another version. Uh, resist him firm in your faith. Firm in your faith. Believe in the word of God. That you have the armor on. That you have the power to resist the devil. Stand firm in your faith. Knowing that the same kinds of suffering. Are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Everybody. All the Christians are going through it too. You have to stand firm in your faith. And you get that by the word of God. King James, one more. Whom resist steadfast in faith, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. See, non-Christians get attacked. Okay? As soon as they begin to start believing too, they get attacked worse because the devil does not want you to find God. At all. At all. Because when you finally find God and understand the word of God, and believe in the word of God and start ministering to others and making disciples and saving souls that's his worst nightmare that's how you get back at the devil and he's going to do everything he can to stop you but there's a way to get past those fiery darts now I'm saying this because a lot of people are getting hit and they're always coming at us they're coming at me right now as I'm doing this video the fiery darts are coming at me. I can't see them, but I know they're hitting me right now. And they're landing on the ground. Why? Because I'm getting in the Word of God. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Now I'm going to um, go to Revelation 12, 9. Jump to Revelation 12, 9. Turn to your Bibles or Google it. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is King. Glory to God. Revelation 12 9 says, The great dragon was hurled down, 
that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. So, that right there, I'll read another version. The NLT, that was the NIV. And the NLT, this great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. Okay, so the great dragon, the devil, the, the Satan, the one who deceives the world, the one who lies, the one who cause, causes you to turn away from God because he gets you thinking that God's not real or, 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 or the word of God's not real. That's the deceiving devil. Don't let him get to you. He's put on the world with not only him but his dark angels. Right here in the English Standard Version, and the great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent who was called the devil Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So he's not alone. I mean, I mean, God has angels, and, and so so does the devil. And they're out, and there's a war going on right now, around us, around me, right now. And there's fiery darts coming at me. Okay, and they're coming at you. And, and, and you're feeling them. You're feeling the sadness, the sickness, the depression, the, the anguish, the, the trials and the storms in your life. You're feeling them. And we're going to get to how to get rid of that too. James 4.7. Let's turn to James 4.7. Amen. James 4.7. Praise you, Father. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. Praise be the glory to God. James 4, 7. Here we go. Amen. Amen. Say, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me and I love Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. James 4, 7, it says in the NIV version, Submit yourselves, then to God resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen? And the New LT translation so humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So basically, submit and humble is the same thing, right? If you submit to God, you're humbling yourself to God. When you're submitting to God, you're saying, not my life, but your life. You're saying, not my will, but your will. English Standard Version, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, these are key because this is how to resist those fiery darts. This is how to resist the devil. This is how to stay happy. Okay? Even though we're under attack, as Christians, we are... We're going to be happy. Okay? That, I mean, you can go through it, but you're going to come out of it. Not like someone who don't believe. Someone who believe, don't believe is going to go through it and go through it. And result is, it, is they're not gonna they're not gonna live in eternity with God. We're gonna go through it and come out of it because the storms make us stronger. I'll read one more, King James. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourself, Father. I belong to you, Jesus. I thank you for. For dying on the cross for my sin, so I can, so I can have the Holy Spirit in me, so I can go into eternity. I submit myself to you. I belong to you. I am a vessel of God. You know, seek a relationship with God. That's how you resist the devil. Romans ten seventeen. Let's go to Romans.
Ten. <coughs> ten. Romans ten seventeen. Amen. Jesus is King. Say it. Jesus is King. And I belong to Jesus. I will love Him. I will trust Him. I will believe in His Word. Jesus will get me out of my trials and get me through them always. Because I have faith in His Word. Amen? Romans ten seventeen In the NIV it says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the Word about Christ. Amen? New Living Translation. So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Okay? Faith. Faith in what you don't see. Right? Faith in Jesus. Faith in the Word. The Word of God. If you have faith in it, you the devil... A fly is not going to land on a hot plate. Okay, I heard this before from another pastor. It made sense. A fly is not going to land on a hot plate. Okay? So you get in the Word of God, you get on fire. You believe in the Word of God, you get on fire. You go out and minister and pray for people, you're on fire. And when you're on fire, what happens? The devil will run from you. Because he is the fly that always wants to land on you. Okay? And I didn't hear that part from him, but honestly, it's coming to me right now. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Jesus is Lord. So faith comes from hearing, and the hearing is the Word of God. Faith comes from hearing. So, hearing the Word of God. Okay, now, you're hearing the Word of God right now. That's wonderful. I, I believe in the name of Jesus. Your faith is growing in the name of Jesus right now. And, and, and I believe that the enemy is trembling right now. Because he knows. He knows that you're going to receive this because we already prayed on it. Okay, but also too, when you, you know, some people don't want to read. I listen to the Word of God, you know, more than I read it. And then when I hear something I like, then I get into studying it. You know, meditate on the Word of God. You know, that's how the devil is going to run from you. When he sees that y'all you're thinking about is the Word of God, you know, I mean, you have your own life. Let's understand. But stick, grab a verse and meditate on it. You know, a verse that you don't understand, meditate. Think about it. Think about it. Say it. You know, speak in tongues. Speak in spirit. If you're not spirit filled, get in spirit. Meditate on the word of God. And you, will, you will resist the devil. King James Version. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word. Amen. Okay now. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, 4. I'm going to try to make this real quick. Uh, 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians four four. So you understand all this, right? There's a war going on. There's a battle against good and evil, and it's for your soul. And the devil's gonna do everything he can to destroy you and kill you. Okay? So we're talking about fiery darts coming at you and how to resist him. Okay? Second Corinthians four four. New NIV New International Version NIV the the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that, display, that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Okay? The God of this age, that's the devil. That's basically saying the God of this world is the devil. Okay? In the New Living Translation, it says, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. Okay, he's blinded people so they don't believe in the word of God. Okay, that's why when you are sick or you're going through depression or sadness, 
and someone prays for you and you and you still are sad that's the devil saying that you didn't get healed you know your sadness ain't gonna go take a pill you know that's the blinding lying deceiving devil if you believed in the word of God by his stripes by his wounds when he died in that cross he died for our transgressions our sins our sicknesses okay every stripe he took was for a, a sickness and they said there was so much stripes on him so much whip marks that they called it stripe because the definition of stripes is many but they're so close together not, a, not even an inch apart his body was filled with them filled with them he, he was unrecognizable as a man yeah, he did that for us and for that we are healed and we gotta believe it we gotta believe it English Standard Version 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. in their case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel. The truth, the light of the gospel. See, the devil won't want you to understand it. The glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Amen. King James, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. See? He's trying to make sure you don't understand the word of God. That you just stay, stay living for the world. And he's happy. He's happy. You know what I mean? And and being a Christian is tough. You're going to go through it. But the fact, the end result is eternal life. So you live for God no matter what. And you believe he's going to get you out of it. Okay, this is going to be the last one. Uh, Ephesians 6 through 10. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. I'm sorry. Now, I'm not going to do this in a bunch of verses. Let's see here, because I understand it already. But I might just go to uh, the Amplified Version to kind of explain it to you a little better. Okay, so this is a longer Bible study, but it's all right. Okay. We'll go to the ESV standard version. Now, the whole armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Be strong in the Lord. How do you do that? By doing the will of God, by meditating on his word, by submitting and obeying to him. The more you do it, the more he'll speak to you, the more he'll teach you, the more the Holy Spirit will train you to be a, a good servant of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Are you listening? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God so you can withstand the schemes, the attacks of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Okay. There's a spirit realm, you know, good and evil, a big a big a big fight going on. Like I told you, we're not wrestling with man. We're fighting evil spirits. And how do you fight evil spirits? It's by getting in the word of God. By putting on your armor. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Not just a little bit. Don't just put on a, a shield. No, you got a lot to put on. You ever seen those knights in shining armor? That's what he's talking about. The whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all, and stand firm. You put on that armor of God. And when you get attacked, when it's all over with, you're standing right there. Waiting for round two, three, or four because you got your armor on and you know that you will win through Christ Jesus. Jesus is King. Amen. Amen. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, that's part of the armor, the belt of truth, and have 
having put on the breastplate, the breastplate right here, the breastplate, okay? The breastplate, the armor is perfect, but you know what? When you start getting attacked in your organs, an arrow hits your organs, right? If you have your breastplate on, the arrow is going to bounce off and not hit your organs. You know, heart disease, uh, uh, kidney disease, uh, lung cancer, um, um, everything. You need that breastplate on. Sorrow, sadness, anger, rage, all emotions in your heart, in your soul, in your body. <coughs> Put on the breastplate of, breastplate of righteousness. And the shoes for your feet. The armor of the shoes. Having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. The gospel is the word of God. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Amen. The shield. The shield. The shield will protect you. All the armor of God. You need it. Not just one, but all of it. And which you can ex extinguish all the flaming darts. There you go. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. In which you can extinguish put out extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation there's a helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit there's a sword which the word of God which is the word of God you have everything you need in the word of God to fight the enemy if you believe and have faith and pray and worship and get in the word meditate in the word meditate on this verse Ephesians 6, 10, 18. And the ones I told you earlier, meditate on them. 18. Praying at all times in spirit. There it is. Pray in spirit. Uh, speak, the, speak in tongues. And if you want some help, call me up and we can, we can work on that with you. Because that's important. Pray in spirit. Um, There's times where I'm being attacked in my sleep. And right away, I have a, a CPAP, BiPAP mask on. And with my mask on, I'm praying in tongues. In the middle of the night. Lord, help me go to sleep. Get away from me, enemy. Get away from my family. Get out of my house. You know, sometimes he'll sneak past the angels that are, I pray for protection every day. And he'll attack me. And then I'll pray in tongues. And he's gone. I'll go right to sleep. With all prayer and supplication. Praying at all times in spirit. With all prayer and supplication. All prayer. Even out of spirit. Even not in tongues. Pray all the prayers. That, so that, and... So that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all saints. Amen? Okay, now uh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to go to 6. The Amplified version has a little more detail. So I'm just going to go to 616 and we'll call it quits from there. I hope you understand this in Jesus' name. Let them understand this. In the Amplified version, it says, the 616 of Ephesians, lift up all over the covering, the shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. Okay? The devil don't want you to hear the truth. So he's going to do whatever he can to keep you away. You know, and, and sometimes death and sometimes sickness and sometimes arguing with loved ones and just, you know, you know, living for the world, he's happy. Oh, he's rejoicing. The devil's happy. He's jumping. He's like, yep, okay. You're coming to hell when it's all done. Okay. But we don't live for the devil. We live for Jesus. We were born to pick up that cross and live for Jesus. So I'm telling you, get in the Word of God. Read the Word of God every single day. As much as you can. Okay? As many chapters of the Bible you can every day. And then pray every day. Okay? If you can only do five chapters in the Bible, that's fine. Listen to five chapters. Um, you can get an audio Bible. 
and, and on YouTube you can plug into Audio Bible, get the ESV version. That's that's there's a lot of them. The N uh, New King James version. Those are easy to understand. Put it on. Listen to five chapters and then pray for for you know 15 minutes. Do that every day. I'm saying someday you're going to be listening to 50 chapters if you can a day, and praying for an hour or two a day. And in those days you're going to be walking in power. You're probably going to be ministering, and you're probably going to be raising the dead, saving souls, casting out devils. Okay, but it all starts little by little. God bless you and Jesus love you. I'm going to end it with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for who you are. I speak healing and blessing and life into those watching right now. Any unclean infirmities, any unclean emotions right now, go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Right now, Father God, I speak life, blessings, and healing upon their bodies in the name of Jesus, upon their minds in the name of Jesus. Let them receive this message. Angels, clean them out. Clean them out. Go over there and minister to them in Jesus' name. God bless you and Jesus love you and I love you. Bye-bye.